Rice is life to the people of Asia, feeding almost 3 billion people. At one time, there were hundreds of thousands of varieties. Now, most of them are gone because of bad agricultural and corporate practices. For centuries, farmers have successfully selected, bred and crossbred traditional local rice varieties using natural and safe breeding processes. In the last 10 to 15 years, agro-business corporations have experimented with engineering life forms. Some examples are the transfer of a spider gene to goats to produce silk in their milk and human liver genes to rice to make it resistant to pesticides. This is called genetic engineering. Agro-business corporations and research institutions have begun making new varieties of rice in laboratories. They call these genetically modified or genetically engineered rice. Let's call it GE rice. GE rice looks the same as native rice, but it is very different. To understand how GE rice is made, we first have to understand how genetic engineering is done. All parts of an animal or plant are made up of cells. Let's take a leaf for example and look at it through a microscope. Can you see the cells? Each cell has a nucleus. This is the command center of the cell. In the nucleus, there are long string-like things called chromosomes. Each chromosome is made up of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. DNA is the chemical structure that holds and carries the genetic instructions for making living organisms. It keeps them going, growing and replicating. DNA contains genes. A gene is a functional and physical unit of heredity passed from parent to offspring. It determines, for example, the color of a plant's flowers or a baby's eyes or hair. Genes contain the information for making a specific product usually a protein. A gene is made up of a promoter, a coding sequence and a terminal sequence. Let's imagine that a big pesticide company wants to make a rice plant tolerant to one of its pesticides, in this case a herbicide or weed killer. This means that the herbicide will kill all other plants in the field except the rice plant. We thus need to look for an organism that is tolerant to this particular herbicide and isolate the tolerance gene in it. Often, such genes are found in bacteria. We take out this gene in a laboratory and use its coding sequence to make a new gene construct, which can then be used in a plant. Now, we force this new gene construct into a rice plant cell nucleus. This process is called transformation. There are two ways to do this. We can use bacteria to carry the gene construct in or shoot thousands of the new gene construct into the cell. Both processes can and usually will cause damage to the DNA of the cell. Also, we can never be sure exactly where the gene construct will land on the long strings of DNA. There can be unexpected results. We now grow the plant cells with the new gene construct into new plants by using further chemicals and hormones. From this newly developing plant, we can make many more of the same. Using the methods above, one company in the U.S has made a GE rice called Liberty Link rice, which is tolerant to the herbicide glufosinate. Another type of GE rice is BT rice. BT rice produces its own insecticide to be resistant to certain types of insects, especially 
moths and butterflies. Companies are also using plants as cheap biofactories to make hormones, antibiotics, vaccines and other pharmaceuticals. Some trials are known to use animal genes, for example, dog genes. GE Pharma Rice has been modified with human genes to produce two proteins found in human breast milk. The plan is to use it to treat diarrhea. All these sound like good ideas, but you will see that they are really not. So what's the problem with genetic engineering? There are many dangers. It is sad to note that many countries in the world are already growing GE crops like cotton, corn and soya without fully understanding the serious pitfalls. As discussed earlier, the process of genetic engineering is imprecise and the risk of things going wrong are great. Let's discuss some real-life cases on GE rice and other GE crops. GE food can be harmful to humans and animals. Trials on rats and mice have found that GE food caused damage to the gut, immune and allergic reactions, and abnormal development of body organs. What will happen to us if we eat GE rice three times a day, every day, over a lifetime? Farmers growing GE cotton and workers handling GE cotton in India reported symptoms like itching, redness, swelling and excessive sneezing. Companies are also trying to commercialize a GE rice called golden rice, which is supposed to be fortified with vitamin A. But it has been estimated that a person would have to eat about 9 kilograms of golden rice to get her daily supply of vitamin A. We have enough sources of vitamin A in the world, for example, from fruits and vegetables. Those who suffer from night blindness caused by vitamin A deficiency are often the poor who have no access to these nutritional food sources. Inserting human genes into plants like in the case of farmer rice is crossing the species barrier. This has serious moral, ethical, religious, health and scientific implications. In fact, these so-called GE solutions are totally unnecessary and a waste of good money better spent on more effective and worthy solutions like alleviating poverty. GE crops are also a danger to the environment. Studies have found that there are less good organisms in the soil where GE crops are grown. Sometimes, harmful fungi and weeds start to multiply. GE crops do not eliminate the use of pesticides as companies claim. GE plants are effective only for a short time against specific pests, but after a while, the pests and weeds in the field build up resistance and the farmers end up using even more pesticides than before. This has been found true for GE cotton in India and China. GE soya fields in South America spray huge amounts of pesticides. This is Silvino Talavera, who came from a poor family in Paraguay. He was only 11 years old when he died in 2003 from double exposure to pesticides sprayed on GE soya farms near to his house. How can we stand by while innocent children are exposed to these poisons every day in the name of profit? Researchers have found that a certain type of GE corn pollen can cause the decline and death of the beautiful monarch butterfly. In fact, pesticide-tolerant GE crops can be fatal to many types of insect larvae, including those of beneficial insects. Beneficial insects, like the lacewing, that eat crop pest, were found to die faster after feeding on pest that had eaten GE corn leaves. GE crops will also contaminate precious local crop varieties, destroying them forever. 
This process is irreversible. This happened in Mexico, which is the center of biodiversity of corn. GE rice field trials are thus very dangerous. In 2006 and 2007, unapproved Liberty Link rice from the U.S., only ever grown in trial plots, contaminated the seed stocks and rice fields in the U.S. and rice supplies to different parts of the world. Some companies banned rice imports from the U.S. and American farmers lost millions of dollars due to this contamination. All these incidents just prove how impossible it will be to prevent the contamination of our fields and food supplies by GE crops. It also shows how much farmers tend to lose from such incidents. Not many people realize that GE rice is created and patented by huge agrochemical companies solely for profit. Patenting means that farmers cannot save and use seeds like they have done for generations. Instead, they will have to buy new GE seeds from the companies every cropping season. If Asian farmers were forced to buy GE rice seeds for every planting season, it would amount to millions of US dollars every year. This will make poor farmers even poorer and rob them of their inherent right to save and grow their own seeds. GE seeds take away the people's food sovereignty. Hundreds of farmers in India killed themselves when their GE cotton crop failed to produce the yield they were promised. They lost everything. Their families are still suffering today. In Argentina, thousands of peasants and children are suffering from poverty and malnutrition because of the intensive commercial growing of GE soya. They have lost their local food like vegetables, which they depended on for a healthy diet. Now, they are forced to eat GE soya, which is harmful, not their cultural food, and widely used for animal feed in other countries. We do not need GE crops, GE rice, or GE food. We have good traditional rice and crop varieties. Biodiversity-based, ecological cultivation of local seeds is the best way to grow healthy crops which are safe and nutritious to eat. Asia's rice is Asia's heritage, food security, and food sovereignty. It belongs to the people of Asia and should not be owned by private corporations for profit or put at risk. Let us value and protect our local rice. Let's go.